So you're trapped in prison for a crime you didn't commit. Are you going to spend the next 25 years to life complaining about it around the cell block? Or are you going to actually try finding a way out? You could dig a tunnel, trick a guard, form a pact with other prisoners, and you can look to the past examples for inspiration. And if you're in solitary, let these tales keep you company and keep you thinking about the possibilities long after lights out. These people escaped heavily guarded prisons with some dedication and creativity, but do you have what it takes to execute your own great escape? And before you break out of this intro, click the red subscribe button. Choi Gap Bok Choi Gap Bok had trained in yoga for years to attain peak physical condition and mental endurance. Like Choi, you may do yoga to master downward facing dog and the warrior poses, but would you be able to really nail the food slot pose? Well, as a master yogi, Choi created that pose when he needed to find a creative means of escaping prison. The 50-year-old Korean had been practicing the ancient art for 23 years before he was arrested on suspicion of robbery. Locked in his cell, he waited until nightfall when the three guards assigned to his area were fast asleep. Then he prepared himself for the task at hand, applied oil to his upper body, and squeezed himself through the cell's tiny food slot. It was 17.7 inches wide and 5.9 inches tall. And while Choi is a smaller man, he was able to pull himself through that tiny space within 34 seconds. To delay the guards from noticing he was gone, he put pillows under his blankets and he managed to stay on the loose for five whole days as a massive manhunt raged around the country. When he was caught, the prison made sure this Korean Houdini had a food slot that even a yogi master couldn't contort his way through. Andrew Roger, Keith Rose, and Matthew Williams Andrew Roger, Keith Rose, and Matthew Williams were all convicted murderers placed within the confines of a prison on Britain's Isle of Wight. A scenic tourist destination and home to some famous concerts by some big name bands, these three became household names in their own right after staging a complex prison break. The first steps were easy. They managed to make a copy of the prison's master key and that got them through the first set of locked doors within the main stronghold. Having hid in the prison gymnasium until lights out, they made their way to the workshop where they'd secretly built three separate pieces that, when put together, made a ladder long enough to scale the outer wall. Keith Rose was a trained pilot in his previous life and, not wanting to use a boat to escape the island, led the three men towards the private airport 10 miles east. The only plane they could find was a Cessna 105, great for beginner pilots but only enough room for two men. Without keys for ignition, Keith tried to jumpstart it himself but to no avail. The three of them were caught six days later. With a complex escape plan plotted for the prison, the men were ultimately thwarted by their own inability to consider how to get off the island. Jack Shepard in England in the early 1700s, Jack Shepard was a rascal, a criminal, and a hero, depending on who you ask. Raised in the slums of London's Spitalfields, he came of age amongst some of the society's darker elements, fraternizing with robbers, pirates, and prostitutes from a young age. But it was his knack for escaping from the bars society placed on him that gained him much popularity with the poor. Imprisoned five times from 1723 to 1724, he managed to break himself out on four separate occasions. On his first escape, he managed to file through the cuffs, locking his limbs together and carved through the wall to get rid of the bars on his windows. After making a rope out of sheets, he jumped down to ground level and scaled the 22 foot high outer wall with his bare hands. On his last escape, he managed to pick off his handcuffs using a rusty nail and with iron still confining his feet, he managed to climb his way to the prison roof before sliding down the side and scaling his way to a neighboring building. He encountered a shoemaker who helped him remove the irons clasping his legs and would have probably remained free had he not been too drunk celebrating to resist arrest a short time later. On his way to the gallows, the streets were filled with mourning women throwing flowers for this early daredevil. The Great Escape More inspiring than the 1963 film The Great Escape is the true story on which it's based. No prisoner of war camp may have been more secure than the Nazi prison known as Stalag Luft III. Located 100 miles away from Berlin, the quarters were raised on stilts off the sandy ground as a means to discourage tunneling and concealed microphones surrounded the outer fence. Roger Bushell, a pilot in Britain's Royal Air Force who had previously escaped two POW camps, was the natural leader for the breakout from Stalag Luft III. In early 1943, the plan was hatched for the POWs to secretly dig three 300-foot long tunnels extending below the fence to the outside world. The main tunnel's entrance in Hut 104 was dug under a regularly lit stove so the Nazi guards wouldn't think to get too close to it. The prisoners chipped away at the building's support columns so that the guards wouldn't see their work being done under the hut, and the men dug 30 feet into the ground to be out of the microphone's range. The hundred tons of excavated sand were hidden in socks and slowly dispersed in the outside soil, which was regularly raked by fellow detainees. On March 24, 1944, 
12 dozen men managed to escape per hour under cover of darkness. Of the 76 men who broke free, all but three were recaptured. Napoleon Bonaparte Depending on who you ask, in the early 19th century, Napoleon Bonaparte was the most famous or infamous person on Earth. The controversial ruler had caused war to rage throughout Europe, and after a failed invasion campaign, he ended up imprisoned in exile on the Isle of Elba. Although he still maintained the respect of his subordinates and had a small navy at his disposal, the other European powers would not tolerate his existence much longer, and he was aware of their plans to move him from the Mediterranean island to the much more remote St. Helena, situated in the Atlantic Ocean. With the shadow of nightfall giving him and his dedicated crew of French soldiers some extra stealth, a small arsenal of boots left the island and reached mainland France in a short time. When word of his escape got out, forces from the new French government were sent to intercept him, but Napoleon was so convincing, they ended up pledging their service to him instead. He remained at large for over a year, amassing an army and reclaiming much of his former popularity until his staggering defeat at Waterloo in 1815. Slalomir Rawix Imprisoned in a harsh Soviet gulag, Slalomir Rawix was a Polish soldier who managed to escape into a much harsher predicament. Unable to cross through Western Russia to chart a route back to native Poland, he instead took the long way around, heading towards India. The 4,000 mile journey made on foot was full of threats both natural and man-made. Aside from the fact that Slalomir would have needed to avoid opposing soldiers and dangerous animals along the way, the main route to India would have comprised of the frigid altitude of the Himalayas and the arid Gobi Desert. With Slalomir was a Polish girl who perished on the trek and a curious American named Mr. Smith. These two people became characters in Slalomir's novelization of these events called The Long Walk. It was an amazing story of survival and yet controversy after controversy argued that this tale was not true. First, Slalomir had a past history of lies and embellished truth. Second, no trace of the Polish girl nor Mr. Smith could be found to corroborate Slalomir's story. It wasn't until a documentary was made about a fellow Gulag prisoner, which told Glinski, which told of his own escape from the Siberian Gulag. He followed the same path as Slomir, partnered with the same Polish girl and American expat, and was able to prove that much of Slomir's story was true. Alfie Hines Anyone who manages to escape from the seemingly impossible gains the moniker of a modern-day Houdini, and Alfie Hines is no different. Nicknamed Houdini Hines, Alfie was a prolific burglar from London's East End, able to pick his way through any lock in front of him. After being convicted for his part in a jewel heist, Hines escaped from Nottingham Prison in June of 1958. Having glimpsed the skeleton key on one of the guards, he memorized its shape and managed to make a perfect copy just by eyeballing the original. After climbing his way over the 20-foot tall perimeter wall, he remained at large for nearly a full year until his arrest in Ireland. In a move that ticked off the authorities, he then sued the justice system for illegal arrest, but this was all part of a master plan. While in court, two guards escorted him to the bathroom where a friend had left a padlock strapped to one of the stall doors. Once his guards unlocked his own restraints, he ended up restraining them and used the padlock to trap them in the restroom and disappeared into the crowded outside streets before being captured again five hours afterward. Less than 12 months later, he managed to escape again, this time living two full years as a used car salesman under an assumed name. Henri Charrière Known more famously as Papillon, after the butterfly tattoo on his chest, Henri Charrière was sentenced to life in Cayenne, French Guiana's brutal prison. Transported from mainland France to its South American penal colony in 1931, he was forced to live in solitary confinement, beaten into wet dirt, and forced to work hard labor in the muggy jungle environment. For his daring first escape, he managed to nab a small boat and drifted 1,800 miles by sea to Maracaibo, where he lived with natives in the area. Life was content until he was captured and doomed to life imprisonment on Devil's Island, which is just as bad as it sounds. After eight more failed escapes, Henri managed to gather together enough coconuts to make a raft, allowing him to float along the tumultuous waters all the way to Venezuela. There, he started over, becoming a citizen, opening a restaurant, and turning his story into a successful novel and film adaptation starring Dustin Hoffman. And still, deep in the jungle, carved in the ceiling of a crumbling cell in the ruins of an old prison is a single word, Papillon. Tim Jenkin, Stephen Lee, and Alex Mumbaras. The walls of Praetorian prison could not hold three meticulous and determined detainees. Serving 12-year sentences for creating and distributing anti-apartheid leaflets, Tim Jenkin and Stephen Lee were locked away in South Africa's notorious prison for political dissidents. Tim Jenkin ended up being the brains behind the operation. He developed the harmless leaflet bombs, which distributed anti-apartheid pamphlets on a timer around the city. 
After analyzing the actions of the guards and their daily routes throughout the prison complex, the partners determined there were 10 barred doors between their cells and the outside world. Since they both worked in the prison's wood shop, Tim, who had picked the locks on his family home as a child, determined how many ridges he needed to open the lock on the first door by holding a piece of paper over a knife and sticking it into the keyhole. Each night, Tim and Steven would break through one door using a homemade wooden key. Once one door was behind them, they determined the measurements needed to make a key for the next door. With the help of a third convict, Alex Mumbaras, some stuffed clothes in their beds to act as dummies, the three escapees walked out of the doors, bought tickets to the UK, and have lived safely within England's borders ever since. Escapees of the HM Prison Maze There are carefully plotted escapes done under cover of darkness in total silence, and then there's the escape from the HM Prison Maze. Nicknamed the University of Terror, the maze was an infamous jail reserved for Irish political prisoners in Belfast. The well-guarded entries and exits betrayed no obvious weaknesses. Up until 1983, the most prolific form of protest was for inmates to go on hunger strike. So 38 of the most dangerous members of the IRA imprisoned in this facility broke out the only way they knew how, brute force. Using an entire arsenal of smuggled and stolen weapons, the 38 Irish Republicans were separated from the rest of the prison population in their own cell block. This allowed them to form a united front and overpower the guards in their wing. Stealing officer uniforms and an automated food cart, they drove through the main gates of the prison. When a lone officer made a last-ditch effort to block their exit with his car, it didn't take much for the 38 hyped-up prisoners to barrel through him. At the time, it was the largest prison break in UK history, and some of the inmates who escaped on that September day are still out there. Now that you're home free, you probably wouldn't want to return to the scene of the crime, but check out any of our other videos here on The Hub.